Hey everybody, we've got some exciting news in the van. Look at these. We now have lights. Yes, a lot has been going on since we came back from Oregon and we are really excited to show you finally. Yeah, we made some benches, which we're finalizing. And Connie, go take a seat. Yes. They are going to be perfect when we put in a platform. Obviously we're short. So we're gonna need to. <laughs> yeah, Connie, your feet do not touch. Them. Yes, but we planned on this because we want to have some more storage under here, and we wanted to add a little bit more height so that when the bed comes down, it can come down. Like about, about right here. here. I guess. Yeah. Aiden's gonna explain you all of the electrical system. Also, uh, we have our monitor here, and under this bench, you're gonna find our electrical stuff. <laughs> Let's get into it. To set up our electrical system, we started putting together the first bench out of two by twos. This is the box. We're working in the box where Aidan fits perfectly. It's all about downsizing. This is going to be my space. Connie can have all the bed. I'm going to be fine here, you know? <laughs> Since we want to do all of the electrical connections, we uh, have been working in our first bench that's going to hold all of the electrical <clears throat> components. Uh, and this is how it's looking. As you saw before, uh, we put it together and everything, but we thought it was a little bit too high. Um, we are going to have like a little platform here that's going to be like six inches high um, but it still was too high so we cut a couple inches out of these ones and put it together again and now we love it While Aidan focused in making all of the connections, I worked and put together the frame for the second bench. After doing the whole frame for the benches, uh, the cover, we cut and sand the wood. I went ahead and used the same stain that I used for the ceiling, it's the espresso that I really, really like. And for the side um, of the benches, we're gonna go with um, Ultra Pure White. Uh, it's an interior satin enamel. You can see it here. And this color is gonna be also for the cabinets and for the walls. You might say like, oh, everything's gonna be white, except of course for the countertops and the ceilings and the floor. Well, correct. And then I wanna add color with, um, you know, in cushions, pillows, um, the cover for the bed, plants, or fake plants, you never know. <laughs> and stuff like that. Paint that Aidan got. 
um, if we ma make marks with our shoes in the benches, we're gonna be able to clean that up very easily. Like, that's the type of paint that he got. We used the Explorus Excel Solar Audit to see how much solar we would need to power our devices and came up with the number of 400 watts solar with a 200 amp hour battery, so we chose a little more with 300 amp hours. There are also guides to show you how all the connections are made and which fuses, wires, etc. you need to choose. We went with the more budget friendly Renogy setup and got a Renogy charge controller which steps down the voltage to our 12 volt lithium battery. A heat gun for shrink wrap and various wire connectors like wire nuts, ring terminals, male and female connectors, wire lugs, and a hydraulic press for crimping. Various cables sizes up to 2 watt wire for the battery, so make sure to check a wire calculator and user manuals for sizing. A Bluetooth connector and a step fit for the solar breaker box, and obviously our solar panels. electrical components it can be a bit confusing where to start first um, actually the first thing I did was create a ground to the vehicle um, chassis so you need to create a ground on a piece of bare metal every um, vehicle may be different and I've seen a lot of different things about grounding but what I did was I cleared a piece of metal that is a structure of the van um, and took all the paint off and put my connection um, with some nuts on the other side as well um, to be completely connected to the chassis. So before I started putting uh, boards up around it, I made sure that I could get to the van metal and I went from there. Next thing is to kind of organize all your components and then you want to cut your wires accordingly. Um, I think that's very important so you can be efficient in the way that your wires laid out. Um, it is important to try to get them all the same length if you can, but basically everything starts with the switch here um, and the Lynx distributor. Obviously the switch turns on the battery or it allows the current to flow from the battery to everything. So the first thing I did was lay out the switch keep it in the off position. I didn't connect anything to the battery, but then I just worked on every component that goes down the line from there. Um, so like the Lynx distributor, you know, we talked about it's a big old bus bar that will go to the DC distribution panel, and it also has connections from um, the charge controller, and this is like the, um, like the subway terminal that all the power is going in and out of. Um, so you want to start with this in the off position and then finally once you're ready to connect everything you can connect it to the battery and know that this is off um, and then you can turn everything on. But probably one of the most important things that you'll learn uh, is that you do not want to turn on um, like you don't want to give your charge controller energy from the solar panels until uh, it has energy from the battery so you want to connect the charge controller to the battery first so it can turn on and then it can receive the energy from the solar panels because if not you're going to fry your uh, charge controller so that's why we installed a breaker box this is just a little box that has um, a breaker switch in it so I can turn it on and off um, it's like I guess kind of like a big fuse but mainly just to shut the system down um, and then I'll show you guys more links to fuses, but we have an a &L fuse going directly from the battery to um, the charge control, I mean the links distributor. And then we have a shunt right here that's uh, monitoring the battery um, and where the ground goes off to the chassis as well. So um, there's a couple components 
that seem like, oh, I don't know exactly, you know, which one of these I need and how to size it. Well, a lot of the resources that we use online will tell you that. And then there's even fuses, obviously, um, in here. Um, I won't open up that up now, but um, it's pretty easy to understand. Um, this is the Renogy battery monitor. The shunt is down there, that's what the monitor feeds off of, and that's where the um, negative cable from the battery is connected directly to it. And uh, this little wire, so it will give me a basic understanding of what's coming in and out of the battery. Right now it's nighttime and we're using two fans and some lights, so you can see that it's drawing about 5.7 amps. Um, and the watch that it's using it will show me the um, percent that I have. Of, uh, or the voltage that I have in the battery currently. We have a 300 amp hour battery, so it's showing that it's pretty much 100% charged at 298 amp hours. Um, so this is pretty cool. I would say very necessary so you can monitor. The charge controller will have some of this info on it, um, but it's more of a guesstimate based on um, what it's putting into the battery and what mode it's in. This will tell you directly like what's going in and out of the battery. Um, and another thing is it came with a temperature controller, but since we have a lithium battery, um, I read the manual of each of these things and said you should use it. The battery has a battery monitoring system in it. It's a smart battery. It has some kind of a temperature management feature. Um, so that should be taken care of the temperature. And then there's also the DC Home app um, for Renogy where you know you can use Bluetooth that's hooked up to the charge controller. I've got a Bluetooth module and it will show me um, what's going on with the charge controller. It's not very interesting right now because it's nighttime. Um, we still have maybe 14.2 volts going into the charge controller, but this will show you all your info. There's also another app that seems to be a little bit more tech and older, um, but this app is another Renogy app where you can really get into some settings for um, the battery that you know you choose. 